Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the channel and welcome to the second fuel power meeting. This time it's a fuel power gathering here at Jilk's Garage Cafe. A bit of bonus Twingo content then before we actually begin the event because we're only about 10-15 minutes in at this point and people are slowly starting to arrive to it. But yeah, look, bonus Twingos. It's the 30th anniversary of the Twingo this year. These were cars that weren't sold in the UK. Obviously Mark II and Mark III have been. But yeah, the first generation, they're very cute. There's something about them. I think the club that's actually come along two jokes this morning, they come along for breakfast and they're heading off to the British Motor Museum to have a further party. But aren't they so cute? You want one, don't you, Tom? It's on the long list of wants. I think Matt wants one as well. I think everybody wants a Twingo at some point in their life. But yes, a bit of bonus Twingo content. They're going to head off in about the next 10, 15 minutes, so I thought, just catch them whilst they're here. But the cake they've got for this, oh, that's lovely. I love that little cake. It's shaped like a Twingo. If you want an idea of what the Twingo cake looks like, it looks a bit like this plush. It's so sweet. At the minute, it's still fairly early on, so not everybody is here yet. However, we obviously have got the Seas, the Daihatsu, and the Smarts, the three cars from the challenge. But we've been joined by CJ in his Alfa Romeo 166. Lovely little car, this. We've seen this at a few other shows before. He's actually heading to Caffeine Machine at about half ten-ish, I want to say, quarter to eleven. Because they've got their own little Alfa Romeo uh, 166 meet up there, which is quite nice. Well, I think we've seen this before at um, Festival Italia. It's a lovely colour. Really nice condition. I do like these, especially the engine that makes a good noise. Good looking car overall. Of course, the reason it sounds so good... Yeah. Who doesn't love a V6 sound, eh? So a couple of 166s have actually met up here for breakfast just before they head off to Caffeine Machine. Ooh. Transit Mark III pre-facelift. J-Reg. Quite nice, that one. I like those transits. Distinctive engine, though. Anyway, back to the Alfa Romeo. This, I believe, is a facelifted version. I'm afraid I don't know what the year of it is. Lovely Peugeot as well. But also V6, 24 valve. Alfa Romeo have already got something about styling. I don't know what it is, but every car they design realistically, especially an art piece. I do love them. But yeah, as I say, the Alfa Romeos, they'll be heading off to Caffeine and Machine in a little bit. But it's nice of them to come down here today just for a little social. Let's have a quick look on the interior. Very driver centric. Yeah, I'm the mass of the interior. <laughs> <laughs> it's a car in action. You expect a few cups and a bit of a mess. But yeah, really nice interior. I do like this. Very driver centric. And if we go around to the engine bay, there it is in all its glory. And all its mess as well. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Joseph Lloyd off to review Matt and Kaz's Daihatsu. Good little three cylinder noises. He also wants to review the SAS at some point, but uh, not today, it's a bit boxed in at the minute, so he might have to at some other point. Anyway, he has come down today in the Sanyong Tivoli, a car we have actually done a bit of a walk around of in the past. I think it was about 2020, 2021. It's quite a while ago. I need to do a proper review on it at some point fairly soon. I've been invited down, it's just trying to find the time. Personally, I think it's quite a good looking car. Obviously, there will be people out there who disagree because not everything's everyone's taste. But I mean, I quite like it. It's obviously very European inspired in style. And of course, the one thing that always stands out with this, Tivoli, I love it. This weekend, it actually happens to work out quite nicely for Joseph because uh, he's just come up to the Midlands to see Mr. Coleman, his mechanic, and have some work done on the car. So as I say, it's actually worked out quite nicely for him to come up here, come to our social at Jilks, and also bring his car up. So then, this is the social, and realistically, this is probably about it. There's a few other cars around the front, which we'll have a look at in a moment. But here's the challenge trio, two of them here, one over there now, because Joseph's just had a quick spin out in it. Also, a little Seat doing really well. 
headlights maybe could do with a bit of work or changing in the future but I might do that over the next few weeks have a bit of an experiment maybe make some more content out of the car before we inevitably sell them on because I think the idea being at the minute the Seat is being sold on the Smart is being sold on and Matt is still trying to decide whether he wants to keep the Daihatsu or not because he likes it that much that's not to say Louise doesn't like her Smart nor do Genevieve and I you know we don't dislike the car at all it's certainly actually really good we're really happy with it but uh, we just don't have the space for it and it's another car to run so really there's no need for us to have another one but little one litre hero i really like this car and i want it to go to a good home at least when uh, when the time comes but yes anyway the smart car here perfect banner for the crohn's colitis uk of course we've been raising quite a bit of money for them lately with the uh, fuel power 1000 challenge Obviously we've got the stickers made up for that here with the three cars in it, so we'll always have that as a memory, which would be nice. Even when the cars are gone, we've still got a few other little stickers left. Uh, you can still see, in some places on the cars, some evidence of Louise's sticker bombing with Avengers stickers. Otherwise, warning slow vehicle, and it's a smart ass, evidently. So, <laughs> but yeah, we've had to quite tightly park them in today, but maybe not quite as much as we thought we'd have to. Still, never mind. We have a look around here. Here's Mr. Coleman, the rubbish mechanic, with his latest purchase, although he's had it for about six months now. Vauxhall Vectra V6. Nice thing, this. I really like the colour on it. It's an S Reg, so very late 90s, automatic. There's a lot of bits in there that I see that are uh, stuff that's very much swapped between other Vauxhall models, such as the indicators, the handbrake, seatbelt buckles. For those who have watched the channel for a while, you know which Vauxhall I'm re uh, referencing with that. It's my mum's Astro Mark III. I miss it dearly, but it's no more. It's probably some tin can or a fridge somewhere. Over here then, we've got my good friend Jacob Vores with his Seat Ibiza. That's him in the background. 1.4, 16 valve. Obviously, basically it's a VW Polo underneath. But it's nice, it does the job well. And also, Seat's representing, as you can see, but it's a nice little car this, I'm yet to really drive it. I've driven it a little bit around the car park here just to help manoeuvre it in because it was a bit tight at the time. But yeah, hopefully one day maybe we can do a bit of a review on it. We shall see. Probably. Probably is the answer. It's going to be around for a little while yet, so I've got a bit of time yet to have a look at it. Here we've got uh, Gonzalo's 3.5 litre Rover P5 <laughs> Coupe. And it's a nice one, isn't it? Look at that. The colour on it is absolutely gorgeous. He loves it. I can see why. It's a brilliant little car. These, or little car. It's huge. Why am I saying it's little? It's literally the definition of a huge car. It's probably got a turning circle of a mile. Yes, exactly. Lovely dashboard on it. Really nicely laid out. Very, very traditional. I believe it might even have power steering. This. It looked like it did from the way here. Uh, Gonzalo was turning the wheel when he was parking it up. Might have to get a little look inside that later on when, uh, when he stopped chatting with everyone over there. The TVR, that's with a club around the front, so he's just sort of snuck in here. Peugeot V6. Little Coupe there. So oh, I like the model on the, uh, on the dashboard there. You might not be able to see it from this angle. Obviously, it's a 406. Oh, I like the uh, anthracite door mirrors these are nice and the interior is lovely as well sunroof <laughs> lovely pin and farina styling on this so very italian in style i really do like this i might have to drive one of these one day maybe he'll let me drive in i don't know we'll find out later on anyway che has come up from southampton today in his renault clio rs it's a trophy chassis as well so tuned for excellent handling 1.6 litre turbo which because it's Renault and they decided to go in quite a different uh, direction compared to uh, every other hot hat manufacturer at the time say Peugeot with the 208 GTI and the Ford Fiesta ST which both said no manual gearbox that's more fun Renault went you know what semi-automatic flappy paddles don't know why but either way, I'm told it doesn't detract from the driving experience of the car. Lovely colour. Glacier white, I think it is, which is a very typical Renault colour. But it does suit this car extremely nicely, especially with all the black detailing and accents on it. 
It does suit it. I believe it's the same kit I actually use on my mum's Sandero. I'm not saying this is like Sandero, it's probably a lot quicker. There's Matt moving the Daihatsu because the TVR is about to head out. You can see he has bonded with that. There's Genevieve being subtle with the uh, cards to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> The noise of those things is just absolutely godly. Anyway, Thomas is here with the Sinclair C5. This is the one I actually had her go in, I believe, at Radwood last year. Met him a few times at things like this. He also came to the uh, weird car Twitter meets here at Jilks last year. Since then, it's changed quite a bit. He's added a little trailer to it with original C5 wheels and covers and things. It's also got gears for pedaling with. I know that sounds probably a bit silly, but these only had one speed, it's a bit like a BMX. These added, or somebody in the past has added gears to it, and that makes it a lot easier for pedalling. So this is Thomas with his C5, one of about two or three that he's got at the minute. One I believe is currently in bits. Doing a little bit of work to try and uh, tension the belt up a little bit, because it was slipping, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so he's just trying to tension that up here. It does show how remarkably simple and easy the C5 is to work on. Obviously I've got one, I'm going to be a bit biased with that sort of thing, but uh, overall it's quite a nice little setup he's got here. I think the one that I rode at Radwood, which I believe I've put in a previous video, I'll put a little link to that and maybe a video clip in now, I believe that was your second one. Um, no, I think I had this one. No, it was this one? I think so, yeah. Okay, well, here's one of them. Either way, it was a good fun experience. He didn't have the battery in at that point, if it was this one, but he's now got a uh, lithium-ion one, or LiPo 4. I'm not too up on these battery things. I need to research them for my own one. But we'll get to that stage in time. But yeah, it's quite nice to just see one pretty well fully complete, whereas mine at the minute is just a bit here, there, and everywhere in the garage. Hopefully one day my C5 will look somewhat like this. It looks in really good condition. Thomas says he's not particularly overall happy with it. There's still some work to be done, but to me it looks pretty good, especially when you look at mine in comparison. <laughs> but yes, I really do like the little trailer on this and the reflector on the back. Anyway, on to Chris and Cheryl's brand new Suzuki Swift Sport. Literally only picked up yesterday afternoon. Did about 108 miles at this point. I love these little things. I got to drive one last year at the SMMT test day at Millbrook. 1.4 litre hybrid engine so you get a lot of electrical boost on it and it's really loads of fun i was really pleasantly surprised by uh, one of these it kind of made me want one i mean at the time um especially with the previous generation swifts the performance on them is actually quite similar to my fiat panda 100 hp the numbers are very similar anyway but this you know i went into that expecting this to be quite similar but no it's really quite a different beast i really enjoyed it i kind of want one but uh, not particularly anytime soon. They're a bit expensive for me at the minute, but supposedly they're going to be bringing out a 180 horsepower version of this one day. So uh, yeah, I might have to have a go in one of those at some point. On to the rest of MG Rover representing here at our fuel power gathering at Jilks. We've got Tom's MG TF from 2003. It's a lovely one, this is a really nice example. Badges look absolutely gorgeous. It's pretty well immaculate. There's a few little bits of uh, rust and stone chipping, of course. It's a used car. It drives quite a few miles. In fact, I don't know what the mileage is on it. Can't see the dashboard's digital, but it's really clean. Tom's gone to town getting it ready for this weekend. Bless him. So these things, really nice drive. 1.8 litre engine, about 135 horsepower, I think there is in these. Mid-engine as well, so it's a good, fun little sporty two-seater. Great for sunny summer days. Today isn't necessarily that sort of a day, but nonetheless, <laughs> it's also the Midlands. It's also England. England's terrible for weather in April, but of all the days we've chosen lately, we've chosen the less, well, least wet one, which I think is probably the best that we could have asked for. But yeah, like the Tia, differences between this and the F is slight curvy spoiler put on the back and the front bumper slightly different as well. 
onto Rob's 25 GTI, a bit more of a sporty 25, stiffer suspension obviously to give it a bit of a more sporty handling. However, I think it's rather understated, it doesn't stand out too much on like say something like a Golf GTI which really is in your face that it's a sporty performance car. This looks like a road car. It just looks like a standard sort of Rover 25 but with a few extra little bits on it that make it stand out such as the alloy wheels. Obviously that badge but it's a really clean example nicely done these guys all obviously keep their cars extremely nice all in tip-top condition or as best as possible yeah i might have to go in this as well at some point there's a lot of cars here i'm gonna have to have a go in but on to the final one of the cars around here at the back of jilks this car only last weekend as a filming the nec they had their Practical Classics restoration show. This car was bought in the auction last weekend. And it wasn't actually too expensive, but look at the condition of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's been fully detailed. It's a Vitesse as well, so you get extra luxuries on it. The exhaust sounds lovely. Okay, it hasn't got an original number plate because it says Subaru on there, and this almost certainly isn't a Subaru. Might be. Might be hiding a Subaru engine underneath the bonnet, but uh, overall, really nice. I like the Recaro seats. You just have a look under here. I believe this is the first show then that Dan, the owner in the green there, has brought it along to. On top of our meet, we've also got a few other cars here for obviously breakfast and things. We've got Volkswagen Golf GTIs. This one, I think, it actually says on the front, G60. So quite a rare model, this, especially with the really extended wheel arches. But if we have a look around, you have quite a lot of TVRs because they've all come here for a bit of a breakfast and lunch meet. Nissan El Grand van as well. I don't think the Nissans were sold here in the UK, so that would be a Japanese import. The front number plate seems to suggest it as well. But yeah, lovely colours on these TVRs and a wedgie one as well. One wedgie boy. Because I know somebody will have spotted it, there's the skyline. I believe it's an R34, I'm not too up on skylines. But also, look at this, this is very sweet and probably a lot more my cup of tea. Austin Healy Frog Eye Sprite, Tour de Warwickshire Square Wheels Club. This is gorgeous, I love these little things. Little froggy faces and all. Got the tonneau cover on as well. Lovely colour. And of course I can't come to Jules without mentioning their comma Cobb van. This thing's absolutely gorgeous. I love Cobby the van as it's named. Let's have a look at that. I hope uh, Keith and Catherine here will maybe let me have a little look around. Maybe not a drive, I think I might be asking a bit too much, but hopefully a look around one day. Gorgeous, love Cobby. And probably the final vehicle of our social here, really, apart from maybe a couple there. Nice little MX-5, Tivoli, uh, BMW i3. Again, being at a cafe, it's quite hard to tell who's here for the social and who uh, who's just here for a breakfast. That long line of cars, you don't know if they're. No, exactly. That's the problem when you're here at these sort of things. We know who's who on the back because obviously that's where we've been designated when people park on the front you don't necessarily know but what i do know is obviously this vehicle is with us murray the land rover discovery 2 i've done a review on this very car lovely color very rare color for its uh, particular model land rover special vehicles red detailing and of course just in case you missed it the fuel power banner on the front so clearly advertising we are here today. So big Land Rover, lots of uses with the uh, with the logo. But yeah, somewhere just down there there's also Nissan Figaro. But really that's it for our social here. So just a nice small social, a lovely little social gathering for well, lovely people. So thank you very much for coming along if you came along to this day and thank you for watching the video as well if you didn't. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, let me know what was your favourite car here, and would you consider coming to one of these events uh, in the future yourself? All the TVR noises in the background. But yeah, thank you.
don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video until then farewell